Cam Redden, and this is your homecoming on 2 SRFM 99.7. It is eight minutes to the six o'clock news. My voice is starting to go now. It's it's bearing the brunt of ACDC on Wednesday night. <laughs> oh, it's, oh it's, it's getting there. It's getting late in the day. Someone that's going to very surely know what I'm talking about. Stu Redman joins yeah. me in the studio. Host of Sideline Eye 7 and 9 on a Sunday night. Hello, mate. My voice will be going Sunday morning oh. because uh, I am going out Saturday night uh, out with Brocky and... Uh, and Mrs. Jones. Oh, lovely! So, um, yes, it should be it should be a fantastic it's, night. It's Looking g- forward to it. <laughs> it's going to be a long five minutes, mate. I tell you what, I, I am on my last legs, voice wise. Here, I, one thing before we jump into the sport, I want to want to make note when you're at the concert for ACDC. I'm not giving anything away, mm. but one thing you realise very quickly in the set is they have so many songs that some of the favourites you'd expect to be there uh. simply do not fit in a two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour show. Now, mm-hmm. that's not knocking the song choice at all, but you look at the set and you think, well, there's really nothing they can take out here. Mm. That's just how many hits they had. And when, yeah, you, uh, when you hear yeah, it awesome. in a, a two-and-a-bit-hour block, back-to-back-to-back, to back to back, wow, they, mm. they were something and they still are something. No, I went last time they were out here. And, it was 2010, uh, I think, looking, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, looking forward to going to, uh, tomorrow night. Now, mate, let's jump into the cricket real quick. Um, we've yep. had a, a bit of news come through the last couple of minutes. The Kiwis have had a mini collapse. They're now 5 for 132. Big surprise. Uh, yeah. Oh, look, I mean, I think we probably all pumped them up for the World Cup. Um, and they, they they had a good run earlier in the year, but nine months later, it's, it's just not working for them at the moment. Is it going to be as one-sided as it looks like it will be, mate? I think so. I yeah. think it, uh, I think particularly, I mean, I don't think they're ready, mm. um, particularly with what happened out at uh, last week when they did the big walk off the field at Blacktown. Mm. So that would have been their perfect preparation so that they mm. weren't prepared for that. Uh, they come up to Brisbane, they're not prepared for that. They go next to Perth. Where it's going to be even worse. Oh, good from. luck, Johnson so, on Perth, Stark and Perth. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. Have fun with that, yeah. mate, mate. It's been uh, it's been an interesting build up to this as well because I know there was a lot of talk going into the the first test in particular that it was going to be a rather even series. There are a few people that were kind of hedging their bets. Maybe Kawaja will fail. Maybe Smith had a, a good twelve months. Mm. Maybe he's not the captain we think we are. Mm. I think I know it's it's only day two. We're only three quarters of the way through day two, um, and we saw what happened the last time. We thought the Aussies. We're going to clear up England in the ashes. That turned around very quickly. Um, I, I, it's definitely too early to jump to conclusions, but if things go the way they are, and I know McCollum's copped some flack for his captaincy here, they just, they've just they looked off the ball, New Zealand. They look like, for lack of a better term, they just haven't come to play. Well, the encouraging thing about the whole, whole issue is that, um, particularly with a guy like Kawaja, uh, we've got the potential. I mean, at the start of the series, you think, Australia, they're starting to rebuild. Maybe if Kawaja can build up a bit of confidence in mm. these next two tours, particularly against New Zealand and the West Indies, we might have a really confident number three who can uh, who can actually mix it with uh, a lot of the uh, the better teams in the world. So it may well be that uh, that we go from a team that might be rebuilding to a team that's actually going to uh, keep. Keep firing. Right in the blink of an eye. We haven't really had that strong number three since Ponting, have we? Mm. So hopefully this is this is a good change. Uh, we're running short on time, so yeah, we want to run on to, to Sam Burgess. Uh, the big news today, the leading story today, this is how big it is. It was leading news bulletins as soon as it broke. Sam Burgess uh, had a run, had a go, had an old college fashion try at Rugby Union. He got his run in the World Cup. It didn't go as, as well as he planned. Went exactly how we all planned because England got flogged. But he's coming back to the South Sydney Rabbitohs. How big is this for the club? Yeah, I think it is. I think uh, I think it'll be fantastic for the club. It'll be great for morale. Unless they need to start cutting mm. other players out of the team. And then things could get a little bit complicated. That's the problem because it's a huge salary that they're going to have to be pumping into him. And mm. I would say he's worth it because mm. when he when they won the premiership last year, he was best on ground in the grand final, one of the best players of the year. He's the type of guy that could, could turn a, a season for you. He's yep. the guy that will push you over the line to get into a grand final. I mean, but at what cost? At what cost? That's the thing. 
Um, I know Dylan Walker's name's been thrown around there. There may be others that have to go. There'll be three Burgesses there, two of the brothers, mm. um, all of whom pull decent salaries and are, are going to be part of the team next year. So exactly how that changes, I guess we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Absolutely. And uh, finally for today, mate, Sydney FC uh, coming up against Brisbane Raw tonight. Uh, now, I, I confess to you that I haven't been following the season as closely as I would like. Mm. Um, it's a top-of-the-table clash, massive crowd expected out there. How much can we read into this? It's still early in the season, but could this be a maybe a grand final preview? Quite possibly. I, I, I don't think anyone can write off Melbourne victory. Yeah. Victory will be part there and thereabouts at the end of the year but what I, my advice would be to those who are going tonight make sure you're not part of those people who are trying to beat the traffic home Yeah, because the last three times Sydney have played at home they've scored in the 89th <laughs> 90th <laughs> and right. first, but <laughs> they're making a bit of a, a reputation of that aren't they and there's nothing wrong with that it keeps it all exciting mate uh, just very quickly in a word or two what's your tip for the night Sydney FC oh, Brisbane yeah. what's yeah, the score Sydney will win Beauty at home. Love it. Stu Redman, host of Sideline Eye, 7 and 9 on a Sunday night. Thanks for your time, mate. Nice. Stu will be back once again next week. This is your homecoming with Cam Redden on 2SSRFM 99.7.